going to the break we did see uh, what is meant by a sequence called list in python so you can store a lot of data here data can be same type different type we got various different uh, operations on the list and thereafter we explored uh, different functions within the list or you can say different operations on the list so continuing to that we'll explore uh, more on the list so i'm gonna say a new python file and let's say this is our session of 3f so i'll uh, create something known as languages like c c++ let's say java we have python then uh, we have this dart let's say swift there are so many programming languages so i just wrote few of them we'll print them uh, over here so you run the code so the way you add it the way you see them so that that's how the list is right so the way you add it the languages in the same way you are able to see them now what i can do is i can uh, come here and say print me a sorted version of languages so when i say sorted version of languages so you see the data in the list is sorted alphabetically for me so sorted is not a built-in function on list it's a function in python right so sorted function can help uh, to uh, get us uh, the sorted version of the list and uh, you can uh, thereafter you know uh, use it as per your requirements i can even reverse the list so i can say print me languages of colon colon minus one so this way what we'll do is we'll uh, simply reverse the list i'll use one more print here so you run this program and what you see that uh, your list now is uh, reversed so we got swift then the dart python c++ java and c so when i say sorted of languages it will not sort the original list in it it will generate a new list again for us right so sorted of languages means a new list will be generated which will be sorted in nature so i can even uh, create a cart which can go as a list of lists so this is one list in the list i'm going to create some uh, elements let's say there is a shoe then there is uh, a mobile then there is uh, a tv so i'll create another list so this uh, list becomes their price list right so let's say shoe is 800 so mobile phone is uh, let's say 30000 then television is let's say 50000 so guys we call this as list of lists so what i'll do is i'll i'll take it in the separate program itself right so that will be more convenient uh, when you will be reviewing it so list of lists is what when you have uh, a lot of lists to be stored in a single list and of course they can be homogeneous heterogeneous as per our requirements right now my question is what will be the output when i will say print me length of cart and uh, what do you think will be the output when i'll say print me cart of zero the length of cart guys acknowledgements expected from all of you and the cut of zero okay so i have uh, acknowledgements from asim vinay and pradeep i'm waiting for others to acknowledge as well so length of cut is exactly two why two because cart is a list which contains two lists right 
so this is the list at zero index and uh, this is the list at first index guys this i hope is uh, fairly clear to everyone right so cart is a list of lists and moving ahead you got a uh, further indexing as zero one and uh, two right so this is the further indexing so when i say cart of zero it's it's gonna give me uh, this list so when you run the code so the length of cart is two and uh, the cart zero is uh, one entire list so it means moving ahead you say length of cart of zero so here it should come up as three i hope this is clear how it will come up as three here because the cart zero has three elements and uh, moving ahead i'll say print me carts zeroth one so what do you think what will be coming here guys zeroth carts first index that is mobile So let us run this code here and what you see is uh, uh, here we have two shoe mobile and television and here we have three and mobile. So guys, I hope uh, the voice is audible. Yes, now it's. Uh, I don't know what exactly happened. Uh, uh, suddenly, WebEx window just got crashed. Okay. So uh, may I know uh, till what time, guys, uh, you were able to hear or? Uh, um, till mobile, we were clear. Okay. Till mobile, right? Yes, exactly. So I think here only the things got crashed. So this is uh, where I was explaining that when I say cart of zero and one, so it's gonna give me the zeroth index lists first value. Okay. So in case I want to print uh, the data in this cart, how you can uh, go ahead with it with a loop? So anyone who can uh, uh, share how I'm going to put up a loop here. Uh, Ishan, can you please repeat because I, I was not able to hear you from uh, this card zero. Print okay. Card zero. So when I say print card zero, so this is going to give me this first list because the zero index of the cart is this list. And when I say uh, print me length of cart of zero, so it's gonna come up as three why because this zero index uh, cart is having three elements so then i say zero and one so it's like zero index first sorry this zero index first element which is mobile so good to go see okay so uh, my next question is how we can loop in this list of lists so what do you think uh, how the loop process can come it come in it how we can put two loops or three loops and we can access it so we can use while i mean while uh, part of zero till okay or till okay so if i say for i in range 0 till length of cart so how many times uh, this loop will work guys three. what is the length of cart two times two right this so this will work, work for yeah. 0 and 1 so i will have values uh, 0 and 1 good to go guys yeah 
here. All right. Now in between, I'm going to say for J in range 0 till length of cut of I. So what do you think uh, uh, how it's going to work for us? Now, what is cut at I? So when I value will be 0, when I value will be 0, right? So cut of 0's uh, uh, length is what? It is 3. And when the value of I will become 1, so cut at 1's length will also be 3. So it means this J loop will work from 0 till 3. And hence, uh, a J will have values 0, 1, and 2. Guys, agree? Can I get one acknowledgement from all of you over the chat? If you are good to go. Wonderful. So coming here, I will simply say print me cart of ith cards jth element so now we need to understand this point here so the initial value of i will be 0 when i is 0 we'll step into this for loop so we'll go from 0 till the length of cut of 0 so which means 3 so j will be 0 1 and 2 so for the first value of i which was 0 so you will get uh, the structure as 0 1 then 0, 2 and then 0, 3. When your i value will become 1, then this part will become 1, 0. So my bad here. So this will be 0, 0, 0, 1 and 0, 2. So next time 1, 0, 1, 1 and 1, 2. So you done the code. So now you are able to get all the values. So I will just put one uh, print statement here. And one print statement here so what you see is uh, all of the data coming up here for us so list of lists right so how you can read data from list of lists by using a loop so guys acknowledgements are waited here if we are clear if you have any query uh, can we display the price of 800 against shoe directly uh, in the same out in the same output of the line uh, yes we can do that so for that what i will do is so i'll simply say for i in uh, a range 0 to length of uh, let's say cut of or i can just uh, uh, put this cut of any do both of them have the uh, length 3 right so I can say yep. cut of 0. Both of them they have the length 3. You can put 0 or 1. Now I can simply say print me cut of uh, uh, let's say 0 i then a comma put a bar here comma cut of 1 i. So when you run this program here so just let me put up here so something like this so here you are a seam so to be more better you can even uh, use these uh, tabs tab spaces so with these tab spaces this is how you get the output right Okay, so this is how we were using list and and uh, I had a query from one of the participants where if they, there are uh, some uh, elements and we want to, you know, find the index of an element. So let's say there are some uh, numbers, for example, 11, 56, 23, 12, 98. So you want to find the index of some number, right? So I can say uh, index is uh, numbers dot index whose index let's say 23's index and then I can say print index. 
Now guys, we need to understand that uh, in Python, there are so many built-in functions. So this index of 23 will give me the value 2. So can I get a smiley or an acknowledgement uh, from the one who raised this query? I just forgot. I think Pradeep or... Uh, okay, so Pradeep raised that. Great. So this is how we can use uh, the built-in functions. So explore more built-in functions on list. So how you will do that? So I'll, I'll explore more in future, but if you have curiosity, you want to explore more, guys, please proceed with it. So you can just put a dot here and you see there are so many built-in functions. You can just read them on Google, what and all they will do, right? So we will keep on uh, uh, exploring more. So write list name and dot operator to get hints for functions in list, right? So this is how you can uh, explore more. Now let us uh, proceed further, but before I proceed, once again, acknowledgement awaited from all of you. In case anyone with any query guys, wonderful, thank you. So let us create a new Python file. Now what I'm going to do is, I'm going to take up you guys uh, with strings. Strings uh, uh, is something which is a series of characters, right? It's again a sequence now. So we'll now explore what is a string. So guys, list and tuple. There's only one difference. Tuple is read only, whereas a list is uh, uh, you can perform editing on the list. That's the difference. So after list and tuple, I am now jumping into the strings, okay? So let us create strings and see different ways of creating a string. So what is string first of all? Textual data, right? It may be alphanumeric with special symbols. Let us try to come here and uh, uh, now uh, see the different uh, ways by which we can uh, uh, create and store the strings. The first one is where I will write down uh, a company name. Let's say the company name is uh, uh, Cisco. So this comes in the single code, right? So guys, we can uh, uh, very easily, you know, uh, uh, write a name in single code or a string in single code. That, that won't be a concern for us. Now I'm going to come up here and say, uh, a brand router brand or let's say a router so I'm gonna say uh, something known as Cisco's uh, ABC router now you see there's a problem for us right so where lies the problem when we are writing the string with the single quote and you want to also adjust something like post of yes, right? So this is where you will find the problem. So what we have a solution. So this is an error now. So this is an error. So solution will be that I'll go with the router and I'll say this in double quotes. So where I need double quote and where I need single quote, uh, this is now very well clear to us, right? So you want to come up and put some post office and hence you need to come up and use a double quotes. So the other way around, uh, when uh, you want to do this way in single quote itself, then you have to put an escape character. So you need to say escape, a slash. So it means uh, the next guy is not finishing of the string. It's a part of data, right? So you have different ways how you want to come up and uh, use this string. So let me, uh, so let's say some another router, Cisco's uh, some XYZ router. So next part is where 
my router is uh, i'll say the same way cisco some pqr router but i'll put an r in front of it right so r over here means a raw string so these are the different ways how you create a string the first one is single quote the second one if you want to put a post of es you have a problem so you you can't do it uh, directly you either use double quotes or you use this slash and tell the interpreter the python interpreter that this is supposed to be escaped don't consider it as the uh, last quote then there can be r which means a raw string which means consider this backslash and a post of e as the part of string data so let us print these strings one by one so the company name then i'll print a router print another router and print my router so when you run this program here you see cisco cisco's abc router cisco's xyz router and you see cisco then a slash s then uh, a pqr router right so the raw string will take this guy as part of data so guys can i get a smiley here these different ways of creating strings anyone with any query now what i'll do is uh, i'll i'll put up some text right so we want to transmit some message so i want to transmit a message so uh, this is an awesome day and then after i'll hit enter we have learned list and string so uh, when i say slash what exactly it means it means uh, that the string is not finished it is taken into the next line so when i'll print down the message here so this message is a one single line of string this is an awesome day we have learned list and string right so uh, this slash means that the part of string the other the next continuation string is in the other line so for the developer it is a bit easier that if you have a bigger string so you can uh, divide it into two lines of code okay so for a, a bigger string we can divide it into multiple lines of code right for example i can just say enter and say a thank you so this is one single line this is all one single line of a message but for us as a developer we are considering that uh, this is uh, where we are easy we are finding it easier to represent a string in multiple lines now if you want the strings should actually be in a, a multiple line let's say some quotes i'll start triple quote and i'll say be exceptional number 2 let's say work hard get luckier now when i will print these quotes so you need to understand we are creating this another string in uh, uh, triple quotes so this comes the way uh, we added them if you can see guys so guys can i get a smiley here the different ways of creating strings anyone with any query so make sure wherever you guys are not able to understand you should be asking the question right away i'll be really happy to help you guys so let's now explore strings so this was the different ways how you can create the textual storage containers and uh, now we'll see some more of the string
So session 3i. Okay, so let's write one uh, name which is uh, John Watson. So I'll print down uh, the name. I will print uh, the type of name. And guys, if you can recall, I'll print down the hex of ID of name, the hash code, right? So all of these uh, uh, can be taken care easily. So this is the name. The class is string and this is the hash code for John Watson. So if I'll say uh, another name, which is John Watson. So guys, will hex ID change or it will remain same? My question here, for another name, will hex ID change or it will remain same? What do you think? So let's run the code and see. So what we see is it's exactly same. Now why it is same? So as uh, we have discussed this in our uh, very initial session, so hash code belongs to the data, right? So data is stored and the corresponding hash code will be copied into these variables. So name and another name. So what are they? are reference variables which holds hash code of John Watson as data. So I think this is now clear to everyone. So Asim uh, and Pradeep guys. Ishan. Yes Asim. Uh, Ishan in this uh, we are not uh, I mean uh, making another name equal to the name. We are putting a John Wicks, a Watson value to the another name. So exactly. how does another, another name come to know that John Watson is already residing in the memory at this particular location? Yes, it's the same story. Uh, Asim, you need to see age is 10, another age is 10. So both of them, they have the same hash code. So age and another age, they hold the hash code for this data 10, right? Same way, name and another name, they will hold the hash code for the data John Watson. So it is already there. 10 is already there in the memory. So another age will not create another 10. It will just point to the same guy. So confused? Still confused, Haseem? Yes. Uh, yes. I mean, uh, how it is going to search into the memory uh, that it is already or the memory is so smart that it is uh, doing the purpose itself. No, 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 no. It's, it's very basic. Let us see how it's going to work for us. So let's say uh, you have this uh, uh, data John Watson available at some location, let's say 1001. So I got this guy called name having this hash code 1001. So this is something which we have already, you know, uh, discussed as in on the integers, right? So this is a reference variable name has to point here like this now when uh, we have this another guy another name this will also have this 1001 in it right so it, it's not gonna create another memory space for us so good to go Asim now Okay, anyways, uh, we can continue. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, uh, if you talk about the lo lower layers, how they're gonna work? They will just see that a string called John Watson is already created. They will not create a new string in the memory, right? So, it's an optimization at the lower level, right? So, we don't uh, care about this optimization, but of course, this is done for us. Okay, now uh, my next question can go like. If I'll say print me the length of name, guys, what is the output here? And I'll also try to come up with the max of name, min of name. So 
so what do you think what are the outputs so length over here is like what now so 0 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 and 10 so from 0 to 10 it means uh, uh, the length comes out to be 11 right so what do you think uh, the max and min will they be computed for us So let's run this code. So guys, uh, what you see is uh, the max comes out to be T. The lower case T is the max, right? And the minimum comes out to be the empty space. So this empty space has the minimum ASCII code and uh, this T small T has the maximum value of ASCII code, right? So based on the ASCII codes, we are getting this maximum and minimum. So do not ever get confused in this point here. Now I'll come here and say print me name of one. Then I'll say print me length of name. So please you need to answer this question uh, uh, very precisely guys. Name of length of name minus one. So name of one and uh, name of length of name minus one. So when I say name of one, so this uh, precisely is what so this is where you say 0 and 1. So O comes at 1. And when you say length of name minus 1. So length of name is 11. And minus 1 means 10 which means the last element that's like N. So I can extract the elements from the list, from the string. So string is acting as a list of characters now for me. So you can see uh, the same indexing technique is uh, working on string as well, right? So uh, I can uh, even apply, so I can just come here and say that uh, print me name of one colon four. What do you think guys? What should be the output here? So you start from 1, then go to 2, then go to 3, but less than 4, right? So here you get this output O, H and N. So you run the code here. This is how you get to see the output. So we, we got the slicing as well. We got the membership testing. So I can say print me, uh, let's say H, N in name. So when you run the code, so guys, you see it says true. Why? Because HN exists in the name. So membership testing. So this goes like membership testing for us. So let us say that there is an email which is uh, john.watson at example.com or let's say John Watson at example.com. This is one of the emails. So I want to validate it. So I can say if, uh, let's say at the rate in email and dot in email or I can say a dot com in email let's say right so I will say print a valid email and in the else case I can say print it's an invalid email so I can I can do a small if else testing it says a valid email and I can even tell the user to enter this input, right? So I can say input, enter an email. So when you run the code, enter an email. So I'll say er.ishan at gmail.com. So it says a valid email. And uh, in case I try to enter uh, something which does not contains at the rate and dot com. So for example, I'll say er.ishan. Uh, let's say gmail dot in so it says it's an invalid email 
so one, one of the use cases right so how you can uh, work effectively with strings okay queries So guys, uh, we are good to go here. Wonderful. So I'll write one uh, last program for the strings. Uh, uh, strings still will have in continuation. So let us say a session of 3J. So now we are going to understand what is meant by string formatting. So string formatting uh, is where, uh, for an instance, I got a name as John. So there is uh, uh, a profession. The profession is, uh, uh, let's say, software engineer. And there is some experience, which is, let's say, three years. So what I'll, what I'll do now, right? So I'll say, print me. Welcome one uh, modulus s, and then I'll say a modulus. Then I'll put down this guy called name, and uh, uh, thereafter I can come here and write print. Good to know that you have percentage d years of experience then i can say a modulus and then i can put this experience so this is known as string formatting and this is a syntax which is uh, quite similar to what we have seen in uh, c programming languages during our engineering days guys right so welcome john so good to know that you have three years of experience, right? Then I can say three years of experience as percent S comma profession. So let's say run the code as software engineer, right? So you can uh, uh, use this string formatting technique. So other way around, so uh, the next simple technique which we have been using earlier is way more easier. So you can say welcome, comma name. Then I can uh, uh, put this over here. Good to know that you have experience, years of experience as Profession. So this is another way with the commas. So you don't specify this uh, a difficult way of formatting the string, right? This is an easier way how we can format the string. So now when you run the code, so uh, welcome John. Good to know that you have three years of experience as software engineer. Same story. Now other way around how I can do. So there there is one more way. Yes, so uh, this percentage S is for string and percentage D is for integer, right? So this uh, modulus D is for integer data. So for every different types, you have these things. So modulus F for uh, uh, floating points. Now I can say welcome and then I can say dot format and in the format I can specify name good to know that you have dash years of experience as dash and then you can say dot format name comma profession so there are three different ways uh, how you can guys come up and format your strings it's it's very simple at the same time so the first one is a C syntactical approach, which we need not to follow, of course, right? Then you got a Python approach. Then you got a format function with the help of which you substitute the data. So when I say dot format name and profession, 
so name gets substituted to the first blank and profession gets substituted to the next blank so guys can i get a smiley from all of you oh so uh, uh my bad so this has to be experience so just just one small mistake here so good to go lalit right so uh, i just accidentally uh, put the name here instead of experience all right so let us try to create one uh, a small program called table of a number there is a number called uh, uh, 7 so i'll now put up one loop here for i in range 1 till 11 so it will go from 1 to 10 right so i'll say print so i'll say dash post of es r dash dot format so i'll say number comma i comma number multiplied by i guys now you see string formatting in action right so when you run the code it says 7 1s are 7 7 2s are 14 7 10s are 70 so dash dash r dash dot format you put number i and number into i so this is string formatting in action so please review it let me know if you have any queries so now open for queries guys so let us uh, come up with queries in case you have so we have more of strings to be explored so that now we're gonna uh, put up on to the next part how we're gonna explore more of strings so this uh, last part ishant how this dash dash how, what's they are defining actually these two this one line number 29 yeah what's what okay. actually is defined in the first dash number will be substituted what is the value of number seven in the second dash i will be substituted that's like one then two then three then four it will change right when loop will proceed the last dash will be number multiplied by i so first time when i is one number is seven so seven multiplied by one is seven seven will be substituted here when i will become two then uh, uh, this will be seven twos are seven into two right so okay. that's that's how you are substituting the data okay and uh, one more thing in the list you said that it's uh, mutable but it's only mutable when we are using inbuilt function of list for yes. example if i'm using inbuilt function of python so it's not actually changing the list in itself it's creating a new one yes 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 exactly so when we talk about list list is mutable which means it is editable so it is designed in such a way that you can edit it but with its functions so tuple has no built-in functions now for an example when i say a del keyword delete keyword so delete's gonna come up and delete a particular index of a list so that means you are able to edit the list right even with the built-in commands but in tuple you cannot do so okay thanks yeah so guys we are good to go or anyone with any query wonderful so i'll uh, uh, simply push this code to the github and uh, thereafter you guys can uh, uh, use the github link so session number three is uh, where we understood list and string part one. Even lists, they will come up uh, furthermore. But just to begin with. Alright guys, so this is done. So thank you so very much. So uh, in the next session, Please make sure that you have coded well and uh, for any queries you can WhatsApp me simply. So thank you so very much. Have a wonderful week ahead. Bye-bye guys. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks.